Once upon a time, there was a baker who baked wedding cakes. And in these wedding cakes, she used polystyrene uh, cake rounds on the, at the base of the, of the various layers of wedding cake. They were just a decorative item, so oftentimes she would get them back after the wedding. She'd be very diligent. She'd clean them off with soap and water, made sure they were very, very, very clean. She'd pack them away in a drawer, and by the time the next time that she was ready to use them, they had been discolored. There's a reason why that happens, and we're going to go through it in this video. I'm Mr. Gigabytes, and this is Gigsplained. The reason plastics discolor, and particular uh, styrenes, uh, like ABS, polystyrene, those types of plastics, the reason that they discolor is they lose hydrogen atoms. Now, they could do that in any number of ways. Uh, one of the ways was described in the, uh, the wedding cake story. And basically... She's using frosting that contains monounsaturated or polyunsaturated uh, fats in it to either glue the cake down or just you know it's it's on the cake itself. You got you've got your buttercream frosting, for example, that contains butter or margarine in a lot of cases, and margarine contains poly and mon monounsaturated fats. Well, what would it be saturated with if it were saturated fat? Well, the answer is hydrogen. So there are spaces in this fat that really want to have hydrogen. They're, they don't have hydrogen. They want hydrogen. Uh, they, want to, they want to collect it. So when you put it on this plate, you're making a chemical reaction that... Uh, that basically removes hydrogen atoms from the polystyrene and puts them into the buttercream. That can also be facilitated by heat, by uh, ultraviolet light. So when we say that ultraviolet light damages plastics, it's true, but not entirely accurate. UV light damages plastics by giving a chemical reaction the energy it needs to react. The other way is just through benzenes. For example, uh, benzene from cigarette smoke, car exhaust, uh, all kinds of things can contain benzene. Benzenes react with hydrogen and oftentimes will remove hydrogen from other substances. You know, react with it. And if it's in UV light and you have benzene present, it's going to create that yellowing effect by changing the properties of the polymer, uh, the, either the polymer or the monomer or whatever, by removing hydrogen from it. It's no longer polystyrene. It's something slightly different than polystyrene. It still retains a lot of the structure and a lot of the characteristics, but it's not the same thing. When we're talking about computer equipment, polystyrene is also used in computers, but so is ABS. And ABS is a combination of different monomers. Let's take a look at them. One of the monomers is acrylonitrile. This is an approximate representation of that monomer. We've got a couple of carbon atoms, a nitrogen atom, and two hydrogen atoms. The other one, butadiene. This is a representation of, of uh, butadiene, approximate. The, uh, we have two carbon atoms. We have two hydrogen, uh, when we have four hydrogen atoms. And then we have styrene, and it's just a basic carbon and two hydrogen atoms. You put all these together, you get uh, ABS plastic. If you'll notice, in all of these, it's all carbon and, and hydrogen. And that's important. When we're talking about discoloration of plastics, we're not talking about an organic stain like you would think of with. Uh, like you would think of with grass stains or, you know, like your clothing. So hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer, which means it uses oxygen 
and, uh, and gets at organic stains. But it does one other thing too. So when you take a hydrogen peroxide and break it apart, you can create uh, all kinds of things. You know, water is one of them. Uh, this oxygen atom isn't going to do much. There is no oxygen in these in these polymers. So um, this is completely pointless. What breaking apart hydrogen peroxide does you uh, by utilizing either heat or UV light, it can break the the hydrogen atoms off, and the hydrogen atoms go off and find blank spots in our polymers, for example. So we have a we have a uh, monomer here that's missing a hydrogen atom, and it would really like to have that hydrogen atom back. So you break apart your hydrogen peroxide, you have a few free floating hydrogen atoms, and some of them will attach to your monomers or polymers and replace the hydrogen that it has lost, rebuilding that plastic molecule, turning it back into something very much like it was before. That's why we did the key cap experiment and we used we used bleach on this particular key. It did not turn out like the hydrogen peroxide keys. It turned out very different because the hydrogen peroxide of course has hydrogen in it. But in this case, the oxygen, it's not, a, it's not an organic stain. It can't be oxidized. So the hydrogen peroxide worked because it had hydrogen in it. So this is worthless. What we're really after is, are the hydrogen atoms that come off of that hydrogen peroxide. So when we take something like this and we, we use a retrobrite method, we break apart those, those hydrogen peroxide molecules some of the hydrogen will attach to our, our plastic. It is not a bleaching action. You are essentially repolymerizing the plastic. So we know that UV light only provides the energy for a chemical reaction to take place. Depending on what environment the plastic is in will determine the type of reaction that you're going to get. So if you're in, in an environment with benzenes and, and uh, other aromatic hydrocarbons, the plastic is going to yellow and lose hydrogen. If it's in an environment with a lot of free hydrogen, the yellowing process can be reversed. Therefore, knowing everything we know about the process, I can conclude a retrobrite method using UV light in a submersion technique, in other words, submerged in hydrogen peroxide, does not harm plastic. It is a legitimate way to retrobrite plastics, and there is little to no chance of the UV light being directly responsible for harming the plastic. So that's a big statement to be walking back. <laughs> but that but that's the process of learning. Once we understand things better, we can draw better conclusions. And so if you have softer plastics, uh, more simple plastics, styrenes, use a, a UV light technique. It'll take a little longer than the speedy bright technique, but it's going to be safer and just as effective as speedy bright. If you use a heat technique, just be aware of the types of plastics and we'll come back with uh, some new techniques that, that we might be able to use for those other softer plastics. So make sure that your, your plastics are, are an ABS plastic or a, a more robust type of plastic before you use the Speedy Bright technique as it is right now. And that is Retro Bright and Speedy Bright explained. Thanks for watching. It wants to fall on the floor.